Chapter 4 Then went Boaz up to the gate, and sat him down there, uh, uh, there, and behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, such an one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city, and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsmen, and I never noticed this before, he took ten men of the elders of the city. See, Boaz was very familiar with the law of God as evidenced through some of the other things we've read. But there's this one passage here in Deuteronomy that I've asked many Jews not many, I ask a couple, okay, but I plan to ask many, and Christians, and all, what does this mean? And I'm trying to find it with one hand here. It's in Deuteronomy. Oh, for crying out loud. I don't remember where it is. I remember my notation right along the edge. And I'm going to find it here very quickly. And I hope I find it very quickly. Um, here it is. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders, and say, My husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him, and if he stand to it, and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and loose his shoe, from off his foot and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto this man that will not build up his brother's house, and his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that hath his shoe loosed. This is a um, you know thing that uh, apparently people don't want to be you know called. So I've notated here John the Baptist. Uh, I don't know if that has anything when John the Baptist said about Jesus, whose shoe I am not worthy to unloose. Just a thought, a question also posed. And I'll start over again with this chapter. Then went Boaz up to the gate, and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, and to whom he said, Ho, such an one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city, and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, What day thou buyest the field of the land of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth, the Moabitess the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. It's like, oh yeah, by the way. I... And the kinsman said, uh, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thou my inheritance to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that his uh, was uh, Kylians and Marlins off the hand of uh, of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite is the wife of Malan. Have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate 
And the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come unto thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephratah, and be famous in Bethlehem. That's where Rachel is buried. Interesting, though. L Rachel is not the line of Christ, but Leah was. Leah was the one who, who was he was tricked into be, being uh, his wife. And but that's where the line of Christ f flows from. Leah, Bethlehem. We all know the significance there. And listen, who else is mentioned? And let thy house be like the house of Pharez, whom Tamar bare to Judah. Judah came from Leah. Judah, the son who was with the twelfth tribe. Of course, that was the line of Christ. And we might remember if we go back to the Genesis readings on Family Bible Time, where Tamar fits in. Pharez was their son. My friend Wax Sleeptoe, Phil, mentioned to me about the ten generations after a bastard that will, the line will resume. He also taught me that the, this is the tenth generation after Pharez that we're reading of now. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife and when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. She's prophesying about Christ here. And a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharez. Pharez begat Hezron, Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nashon, Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. Jesse.